we are sitting with this, the lion still, and the lioness has made a return. She actually just did a couple of roars for us, so let's see if she does it again. I don't know who she's trying to call. Maybe the third lioness that's missing from the Styx Pride. I'm not so sure. Because as far as I've heard, she's been hanging around quite far away from here, sort of um, towards the nets, which is, well, I suppose it's actually not too, not too far from here. So she could probably hear her calls, but I think her cubs are still a bit too young. Um, I think we, they, we had a rangers meeting and they said that they were born on the 28th of February, so quite late. Uh, so they, they're basically just a month old now, so we might start to see them soon. They might be brought back to the pride. This is, this is fantastic. It's such a wonderful morning out here. It's actually getting very hot. I'm going to have to take my jacket off now. I'm feeling a little, bit, a little bit too warm. But our little cubs are becoming braver and braver and more comfortable with us. And I don't think we've quite, quite had uh, so much time to spend with the lion for a very long time. Sorry, if you hear a bit of shuffling around, it is me. Mm -hmm. I'm just removing my big coat. Have a little listen to this one. No, now it's stopped moaning. I do love the sound of a lion, a little lion cub when they are always complaining about everything. Definitely this one takes after mom. Going back to your lock, and no, I just sat down behind the car. But we've got another little cub sitting right next to us, very close. And I just I can't get enough of looking into their eyes. They really just have the most gorgeous coloration. And in Suku too, in Suku with those yellow, yellow, yellow eyes, when he looks at you, wow, it's really, really quite fantastic. What have you found? A stone? Are you going to pick that up? Yes. It's mine now and I shall take it with me and you will be my best friend for the rest of the day. It always amazes me as to what actually catches the attention of these little cubs. Don't you think? It's always quite funny. They pick up the most bizarre things. I can understand playing with elephant dung because it can roll around. Now I'm going to have got the stone in my mouth and I'm also going to play with a stick. Is that a stone? I don't know. Maybe it's a piece of slate. That's what it could be. <laughs> and now the brave little lion is coming from behind and realized that, hey, what toys do you have that I didn't find? Give them to me. I also want to play with them, please. Now they're going to chase each other. Oh, <laughs> so fat that it fell over. And they were very casual. Great recovery, little lion. Great recovery. You made that look like it was supposed to happen. I actually don't know what that lion is chewing on. I have absolutely no idea. Maybe a guest once lost something, but it will be all right. They won't eat anything they shouldn't eat. It is just life as these lions start to tea. Is it a, what is that, a piece of rubber? Yes. That actually looks like it's come from a vehicle. It looks like a bit of rubble or something that's maybe torn off. Maybe a mud guard, part of the mud guard. That's exactly what that could be. And that sometimes happens is the way we off-road and things like that. The amount of mud guards I've actually picked up and bit, bit, bit some pieces of rubber and bolts. The amount of bolts I've picked up off of the ground, which scares me a little bit because at the rate at which we find them, it means that the vehicles can't be doing too well. But don't worry, don't, don't panic. It's really just chewing on it because it feels nice. It won't, I don't think it will eat it. They're not that silly. That must feel great. It's often you'll see them chewing on sticks and it feels great on their teeth. Yes, you go tease your sibling with that and go and play with it. No, I'm going to play with it on the elephant dung now. That's wonderful. If these lions do move and this little cub does drop it, I shall pick it up and I shall put it in the car. But for the moment, I can't really do too much about it. Except we can just watch it as it chews in this beautiful golden morning light. Isn't that lovely? Look how the light is catching its eyes. I'm actually really impressed at the condition that these little cubs are in. 
they're looking great they're not looking too mangy just a couple of patches behind the elbows so hopefully they keep cleaning themselves and with the abundance of food that's around at the moment I think that they should be all right they've definitely got a much better chance now during the drought there really wasn't much hope for them yes don't eat that don't be naughty this is so stunning really really beautiful Yes, you pull on that. Now, fork and noodles, you've asked a, quite an interesting question, so we'll go into a bit of a discussion about this, but you said, how do they prevent ancestral mating uh, with, the, with the cubs that come through? So, uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite amazing how nature's actually figured this out. So that is why the females stick together and the boys come and go. The males never really stay with the pride for too long. It's normally a couple of years, and a couple of generations of inbreeding is normal and natural out here, but can you believe it? Obviously with us as humans it's completely different, but with the cats and with the various animals it's fine, it's not frowned upon. However, you won't find a coalition of male lions lasting for more than two or three years, sometimes a bit longer if it's a really big coalition and all the members have managed to uh, survive. They might stay for a bit longer than that. Having a good groom. So what happens is that new younger males, fresh, fresh genes come through, chase out the old boys and then that way when they start mating with the females there's a completely new bloodline and then of course those younger cubs that are now two or three years old, the females will start mating with, with the new boys. And if there are any new cubs around unfortunately, uh, if, if there's a pride takeover, uh, then they will be killed by the new males if they're only if they're less than about if normally if they get to about a year and a half two years they'll be all right but anything less than that uh, the boys will take out the new males so they'll unfortunately kill them and that is nature those males don't want to spend all their energy on raising someone else's uh, genetics and make ensuring their survival they obviously want their own genetics to be the ones uh, that fill up the lion population they're starting to settle down now as it gets warmer but that's of course no surprise and we might stay here for a little bit longer I'm not too sure just yet we'll see how they behave but let's go across to Byron who's gone from birding to one of the largest mammals in the world 